Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to The Money Movement, a show where we explore the issues and ideas driving this brave new world of digital currency and blockchains. Today we're going to have, I think, a, a very special episode. Um, we're going to have a live demo that really tries to show the real power of global digital currency. You know, a, a lot of times um, when I talk to people who are not, you know, familiar with uh, the space, or you know, you talk about things like digital currency, and people are trying to say, well, how is this different than how I can do things today? Um, that really reminds me. Uh, you know, significantly of the early days of the internet, where, you know, when, when people first had um, email addresses and talked about the ability to send and receive an email. And, um, you know, so people often say, what's so special? What's so powerful about digital currency? And I think once you experience it, once you see it, once you see the speed of it um, and, and how it functions, uh, it really is mind opening. And so that's what we're really trying to do today is, uh, is, is open people's minds to see the power of this on a global basis. And, and really um, more fundamentally, uh, we are, wanna demonstrate how we are evolving uh, our financial system, evolving from a financial system that is closed off to billions of people, a financial system that's expensive, a financial system that's slow, that's full of barriers and walls. We're moving to a financial system that is more open, global, efficient, uh, inclusive, and, and that's really the vision that we have with digital currency. So it, it all starts with how we move money, which is the building block really to every other form of economic arrangement. So today, in the money movement, we're gonna move money. Um, we're gonna have a, 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 an experience of moving uh, stable coins, USDC, around the world. These digital dollars are gonna move from a business in Boston to a contractor in London, uh, to a friend in Seoul, South Korea, uh, to another freelance developer in Buenos Aires, uh, through a marketplace, an e-commerce marketplace, that's run out of Indonesia and ultimately to a supplier of goods uh, into that marketplace in India. We're gonna watch as these funds move uh, seamlessly across different digital wallets, different digital services with convertibility into uh, different fiat currencies. Um, it's gonna be really powerful. And, and joining us obviously today are a tremendous group of people, entrepreneurs building great products uh, great wallet services, great exchange experiences that really make uh, you know all of this uh, completely possible. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, so I want to get started uh, moving some money. So what I want to do is actually just start with um, uh, what we call a uh, Circle business account. So uh, what we have here, this is circle.com. Earlier this year, we launched something called Circle Business Accounts. The idea is that really any business in 150 countries should be able to open up a financial account and use it to make payments, receive payments, automate it in lots of different ways. So a Circle Business Account is sort of like a starting point for a business that wants to use stable coins and USDC as a, as a way to um, make payments, whether they're um, to their employees, to to partners, to suppliers, to really anyone um, that's out there. So I'm actually, uh, you know, logged in here into my Circle Business account, and um, I'm going to be making a, a B2B payment. And actually, uh, I'd like to in invite on uh, uh, to join here uh, Itamar from Argent, who is in London. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, nice to see you. Thanks. Pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for having me here. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, uh, you know, in, in this example here, I'm in my business account and um, I'm pretending that you're uh, a consultant that helps uh, look at policy issues in the crypto space. And so we had a short contract, you reviewed a document and I owe you $300, uh, $300. so I'm going to pay you in USDC. So all I do here is go to transfer funds. I've got you in my wallet and I'm just going to you know, put in, you know, 300 
uh, uh, USDC, I'll put in 10 cents for the, the kind of fee that is paid to process that transaction. So very inexpensive. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, conduct that transfer. I just have to put in my, uh, uh, my uh, two-factor code here. And that will be off to the races. So, you know, what we have going on here is basically uh, using a business account, I was able to, as a business, convert from any bank account really in, in most of the world. And I was able to convert, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars, or it can be thousands or tens of thousands, or if you're a major business moving millions of dollars, you can convert those funds. And generally, you can do that the same day. Um, we actually have an ability to do it 24-7, 365 with certain setups. Uh, but generally, those funds get there and they're converted into digital currency, in this case, into USDC. And uh, and then in that case, I just, you know, punched in the um, wallet address, uh, which I had saved um, for, uh, for, for Itamar. And um, and, and now we're, uh, the transaction's on the way and, and, and I want to just start maybe just talking a little bit uh, with you, Itamar. So um, the, the transaction is going to a product that you created, which is, uh, or you and your team obviously uh, helped create, which is the Argent wallet, which is a super, super fly, uh, you know, mobile, mobile wallet. Maybe just talk a little bit about Argent, um, the, the product, your vision. Sure. Yeah. So by the way, the funds arrived. So thanks. Thanks for that. Um, awesome. And our goal at Argent is really to enable anyone to control and prosper from their digital assets. And that means creating a, a non-custodial wallet so where people are in total control, but that is as easy, as secure to use than uh, I would say the current banking system. So people shouldn't have to worry and think about them the blockchain complexity, basically. So this, um, this, sorry to interrupt. Like, I think for a lot of people who are new to this space, um, this idea of a, uh, a custodial wallet versus non-custodial, there's sort of this philosophy of you can keep your money in a financial institution like a bank or uh, someone who's hosting the funds for you and, and, and so on. But also, it's really powerful to be able to control the funds yourself, like money in your wallet. Um, and so mobile makes it possible for people to download the software application. And, and, and because the, these technologies are sort of open and available to everyone, um, you can build a user experience where the user is in total control of the funds, uh, not trusting some third party with it. And that's what you've really been trying to solve and, and, and solve that with an excellent user experience. Exactly. And what we've built on chain is really the same feature and you recognize from your bank. You can recover your money if you lost your phone without relying on uh, you know writing up some seed phrase on paper we have on-chain phone monitoring so if someone tried to drain your account uh, things would be delayed trusted address etc so really building the same feature um, or, or the same experience the same mental model than what we are used to uh, but where it gets interesting is you can plug to an entire world of decentralized finance um, so this you want is, me to maybe this start with that yep. this is available globally basically in in after so anyone with a phone in the world can plug into the same financial system. That's really what's so exciting about that. You download the app and suddenly you have access to that same global transparent uh, financial system. So like, and, and a business that wants to pay you, you can just receive those funds instantly, basically like we just saw. Exactly. Then you can decide to, you, you want to earn interest on them, then you can use that to put them in some lending protocol, which would feel almost like a savings account and yeah. you would start an earning interest on your, uh, awesome. on your SDC. Let's, let's do that. So you, I, you got 300 bucks. Maybe you want to save some. Yeah. So that's the Arjun, let's say finance marketplace. You have all these protocols. Uh, a compound is one that allows you to land and earn interest. So I will pick uh, USDC. I will put, let's say 30 uh, USDC in there. Uh, and that's it. That's all I do. I literally input 30 push on one button. The transaction will go to the blockchain, will go through, and I, I will basically start earning interest. So here, at some point, when it's finalized, I will see my 30 USDC, and I will start uh, accruing uh, interest. That, so that's really how, how easy it is. For, for most people, when they think about you know, earning interest, they think of, oh, I, I have to like, I, I essentially have to lend my money to a bank, and the bank is going to go do something with that, and they might pay me some interest. What's, what's happening here is with something like Compound, that's actually, there's, there's no company. You're not, it's not like you're giving your money to some company and trusting them with it. You're actually, you're actually lending your money to a marketplace 
on the internet that's just run and enforced by code. It's a decentralized credit market. We, uh, we had Robert on the show earlier and talked about it, but really it's a breakthrough. And so in a sense, like anyone with this mobile wallet who receives these funds can start saving and generating interest and participating in, in financial services capabilities that just are you know, generally just not available to them at all. Yeah, exactly. I think the beauty is not on anyone can access this service, but this services and, and anyone can build new one on top of existing. It's really totally open. Uh, and as you say, it's, you don't need to put trust into a company, into a certain service. Uh, it's, it's ruled by the code. Uh, and you can, in this case of Compound, you can pull out your funds at, at any time. So it's extremely flexible and, and simple to use. It's, it's so, so cool. So, all right, we've moved some funds. We're getting some yield. Um, I heard uh, you, you were going to have a friend uh, fly over to London, uh, but it got canceled because of uh, COVID. Um, so uh, maybe, maybe you need to pay that friend back uh, you know, for, that, for that trip. And they were from Korea. So why don't we invite on your friend, Ronald. Um, Ronald, can you uh, join us here? Hi. Hey, Ronald. Hey, Ronald. Hi. Excellent. Welcome. Uh, cool. All right. So uh, Itamar owes you, uh, owes you some money. Uh, how much does he owe you? It does. I believe it's 220. 220, uh, 220 dollars. All right. So we're going to beam that uh, USDC over. Uh, Let's do that. And yeah, another great feature of our gen, you don't need ETH to pay for your gas, it's transaction fees. So it's really easy. I picked Ronald. Uh, you said 220. That's it's it. Like I'm an address book that you have, like similar to like email or whatever. And exactly. Well, it feels the same. And, you know, sending money in the US through Venmo. I've just picked Ronald in my address book. Sorry, I went a bit fast, but I literally saved his address. And now oh. I picked 220 USDC and that's it. Uh, I confirm my transaction. As you can see, there is no, no fee. Uh, it's just free to send and that's it. I would say 10, 15 seconds and uh, Ronald should have the USDC uh, in his account. So that, that's pretty awesome. So one of the themes that, um, that we talk about a lot is um, interoperability. And, um, and open networks. And people generally, like when you talk to the average person, they're like, I don't know what the hell that means. But the, the benefit here is like, you're not like locked into a single app. Like Circle Business Account is a service. You have a, a, a wallet that any user can use. Ronald has a wallet service that he runs in Korea. And these all can speak to each other, just like our email systems and text message systems can speak to each other. So, um, so, so it's, 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 uh, it's, it's super cool. Um, well, uh, you know, thanks for joining for this, Itamar. Uh, this has been incredibly uh, illustrative and you know, obviously love what you're doing and, and thanks for sending along the money. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, up to you, Ronald. Yep. Thanks right. a lot, Itamar. Excellent. Welcome. Um, so happy to have you uh, on the program and uh, ex excited, uh, excited to do this with you. Hi, Jeremy. It's, it's really nice to see you again. And um, I should I share my screen because yeah. I have. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say, I was going to just maybe start, you know, just a little bit. So Probit, uh, you guys, uh, you guys operate a wallet service and you, you operate uh, an exchange uh, and it provides this great experience for people who are both trading, but also sending and receiving payments and moving funds from say like a stable coin, like USDC into Korean won. Yes, exactly. So right here in Probit, Right, which is based out and um, started in Korea. We have created a fiat to crypto exchange, which means that anybody that wants to trade between crypto to fiat, uh, crypto to Korean won in this case, or from Korean won into crypto or crypto to crypto, yeah. um, will be able to do so very easily on Probit Exchange. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, if anybody's interested, all you have to do is sign up, takes 10 seconds, right, only needs an email address, and then you would be able to participate in all the trading functions that we offer on Probit. So for people in Korea, obviously, because you can connect like the Korean, Korean banking, right, this is a really powerful way if you're moving value to, to, to do that. And, and obviously, there's the, the, the sort of trading side of this, and then there's the wallet side of this, which is connected to these same open protocols, connected to the, uh, you know, through the Ethereum network to protocols like USDC mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, send and receive these, these digital dollars as well. Exactly. So Itamar, um, he mentioned just now that it's going to take me five seconds to receive the USDC. Um, and it actually has, right? So if I were to go and check it out, 
in my wallets, right, search for the USDC, I would be able to see it being confirming right now. Excellent. So for, for, for a lot of people who are maybe new to these digital currency transactions, I mean, basically, there isn't like some company that's processing these transactions. When, when a digital wallet like uh, Argent like sends that transaction, it's sort of broadcasting that transaction to this global network of computers that are, are not in control of any individual or any company. It's sort of this decentralized network uh, of computers that are verifying all these transactions. And, you know, the, the power of that is that there's no, there's no, there's no centralized, you know, intermediary. It's peer to peer. It works over the internet. And um, it, it also has these security capabilities, which is that this is like a tamper resistant, tamper proof transaction system that's open and global, available for anyone uh, to plug into. Now, um, the, these transactions on Ethereum, the initial confirmation of it usually happens. And, and I guess it, you would show it in your screen. See, someone would see like an incoming or receiving transaction in, in, in literally seconds, like it, it mm -hmm. gets broadcast, that first transaction gets picked up by the network. It, it usually is, you know, something like uh, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and then you know that you're getting it. And now obviously then your exchange, you're waiting for a few extra confirmations before you're ready to let someone use that as a, as a, as a currency. And Jeremy, I would not have been able to explain it better myself. <laughs> that, that was amazing. So right. you got the just money. in time. Yeah, I got the money. <laughs> Boston to London to Korea. To really Korea. Free. And with basically no cost or just like 10 cents uh, so far. So it's, yeah, it's really cheap, right? So now you can see that I've been credited with this 220 USDC in the middle of the screen, right? And I have two items I would like to get done. First of all, I would like to show you how you can withdraw it into part of the traditional uh, Korean banking system, right? And so yeah. if you follow me here on the screen, I would go over to the exchange, right? I would need more or less 100 USDC right. um, to be exchanged. This is Korean like uh, for, for the average person, right? There's currency exchange. Uh, you know, sometimes you do it at the airport. Sometimes you do it uh, online. Uh, exactly. You have a really sophisticated uh, system where people can like, you know, make, make large trades, uh, et, et cetera. And so like, like someone who, who is even like a day trader of dollars and yuan could, could do that. But, but even like a simple transaction, like taking a couple hundred USDC and converting it to yuan, you can do that in like a, a couple of clicks. Yeah, exactly right. So in the most simplest form, this is a money changer, right? I'm now changing between crypto to fiat. Uh, I'm now changing between US dollars to something that represents Korean won. Right, so um, there are two ways I can go about doing it. I can, the simplest way would be to find a price that I want to, all right? And I need 100 USDC. So if you look at the bottom right hand corner, yeah. I've decided that I want to sell 100 USDC at this Korean won rate, 1,199.05, which by the way is a very good rate. Um, right. So it's much, yeah. much, much cheaper than like the, the 3%, 4%, you know, all these crazy fees that banks exactly. charge, all these, I mean, it's, it's totally insane. And so you're, you're like, we're doing this super fast, super cheap. So um, that's awesome. So you're going mm -hmm. to convert to Juan. I mean, you mentioned the airport, right? So if you were to transfer or to change at the airport, it would cost you even more with the commissions and stuff. And this, yeah. this one is really fast free. All right. So I would go continue by selling. Yeah. All right. And take a note of how much Korean won balance I have now. I yeah. have some small change, right? This is not even anything. And then once I click it, you know, I have a certain amount of Korean won, as right. you can see over here. Right. All right. Awesome. And you can see that my USDC balance has decreased by a hundred, right? Oh, yeah. affirming yeah. exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. The once I've got the Korean won, all right, the Korean won value here. I can choose to withdraw it into the Korean traditional banking system. So this is the amount that I have in my wallets. Yeah. And well, this is, I changed the bank account number. So 
so that my private information is not out there. But it yeah. would look like this. Yeah. All right. And uh, all I need to do is choose an amount that I would like to withdraw. So this is more or less 150 US dollars. Yeah. Right. right. All I have to do is withdraw this. Yeah. Click this. And um, well, right now it's 9.20 p.m. where I am. So uh, right. the banks are not going to process it. Yeah. So uh, the legacy yeah. banking system is slow. <laughs> they uh, let us down today. <laughs> and, 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 you know, we can move money on the Internet at the speed of the Internet and, and radically cheaper and much more easily for people and businesses. But all right. At this point, this is great, though. But the important thing here is like anyone in the world who's got USDC can go to Korea with it, get, get it to someone in Korea. They can very cheaply get it in one and get it into their bank, uh, you know, much, much easier than in uh, a lot of other ways. So that's exactly. awesome. That's awesome. Um, cool. Now, I, I, uh, I understand that you, um, you work with a, uh, a freelance software developer in Argentina, that, that there's a team there, and there was like a small project you worked on. Um, maybe we can invite uh, Sebastian in uh, from Argentina to, to join us here for the next leg of the transaction. Yeah, I work with Sebastian and he's really cool. And uh, I will be, I will be giving him what I owe him, owe of him, which is um, about 120 USDC. All right. I mean, him being in Argentina at all. Oh, here he is. Hey. Hey, Sebastian. Hi, hey, Jeremy. Hey, Ronald. Hey, welcome. Uh, how's it in Buenos Aires? Uh, I'm today. I'm actually in Sao Paulo. Oh, Sao Paulo, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. But yes, so um, Ripio is um, a crypto wallet we started in 2013. I've been before in the show, but refreshing. Uh, we have, we provide uh, similar services as Probit. Plus, Actually, um, I'm going to have you, I'm going to, I want to have you talk about that in a moment. I want to, I want to. Yes, let's do that. Let's do the transfer. We're yeah. going to get this transfer. So. There's 120 USDC left. He got some into Korean one, and now uh, he's going to pay you back, I guess. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So right now, let me pay you first, <laughs> and then. Um, so I'm going to withdraw it. It's like you said. It's going to take as much time as the internet does. Um, right after I fill in my codes. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty pretty typical because this is like digital money. Uh, you know, you, you, you know, and, and once, you know, one of the things about digital currency is it's a little bit like cash, right? If I like give you a hundred dollar bill, like you have it, you could like, it's, you can go with it and, and digital currency is similar. It's a irreversible transaction. And so it's, it's really important that, you know, wallets and services that, um, that people use have good security controls. So things like these uh, two-step verification codes, and even, you know, double security, like, you know, confirm it through an email. That's another, me. Uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> an, a, another confirmation, uh, you know, with, um, with uh, an authentication code, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on a, on a mobile device. Um, so th th these security features are, are really key when you're, mo when you're using digital money and you're using it on the internet. So um, awesome. Yeah, but, but they also make it cheaper. Um, this also means that, for example, there are no charge backs. Uh, credit cards have a lot of cost uh, with them because yeah. the transactions are reversible. Yeah. So that puts a lot of pressure on, on merchants into having to have extra yeah. security, extra controls. Absolutely. Uh, that, that this is not necessary. But much better for, 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 you know, for, for people in businesses who want to know, like, when you're when you get when you send that money, it's good and and it's a final transaction and and uh, and it's secure. So so those are those are definitely big big benefits of of digital currency. Um, uh, awesome. Well, Ronald, thank you so much. Uh, you know for uh, for joining us uh, in this in this journey around the world uh, with digital currency and and USDC. Thank you. And and the USDC was really happy in its time in Korea today. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool. Well, um, uh, thanks. Well, excellent. So, uh, Sebastian, it's it's uh, it's nice to see you again. Um, and um, you know, maybe, maybe as you were starting, uh, I think it'd be great if you want to talk a little bit about uh, Ripio 
and a little bit about you know the importance of digital currency in Latin America and Argentina and, and stable coins as well. Totally, and and I think this is not only like relevant all the you know, always, but also in this in this particular time is is very very important, and we are seeing a lot of developments around that. But yeah, so I was as I was saying, Ripio is a wallet in South America. Uh, our main countries are Argentina and Brazil. That's why I'm in Brazil right now. Uh, we have over 450,000 users across the region. Um, and we, we start the business with the mission to provide access into digital assets and into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Uh, we allow people to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum and stable coins across the region with their bank accounts. And we also have um, yeah, integrations and partnerships with networks that have like, for example, convenience stores where you can go with cash and load your wallet and convert physical cash into digital uh, money, uh, which basically is to enable people to access the, the online economy. Uh, across Latin America, more than half of the population doesn't have access to financial services, yeah. traditional, formal or semi-formal. And this is a completely new system. Like as uh, yeah. as we saw earlier with Itamar, like you can like just load uh, digital uh, money and be act in access to shield and access to lending, uh, which is things that a big percent of the population uh, around the world are uh, don't literally don't have access. Right. So this is also in the, yeah. really empowering for people mm -hmm. in, in South America. In, in many, and, many and, participating in the global financial system, making th their own use of their own money safer, more secure, more efficient. Um, and, and, and Ripio plays a really critical role because you, you're providing this wallet service, but you're also providing this connection with the existing money systems in, in, in some of these markets. Yes, uh, and not, not only that, also um, uh, currently in emerging markets, um, there is, um, we have very high inflation, like Argentina, for example, is having uh, three or four percent inflation monthly. Like we wow. have like last year, 40 percent inflation. Uh, the currency this year alone has dropped more than 50 percent. And this is typical. Uh, and exchange like uh, exchange rates are varied depending on how, how you're flowing money. Yeah. Uh, and that it puts a, a lot of pressure and having having access to stable coins is a very good way to save yeah uh, in with less volatility than, than crypto i will say like long term yeah uh, we've been will, talking a lot uh yeah. the, on the show here about you know in the current global macro environment with all yeah. economic stresses in so many countries you know uh these these intense uh, interventions by governments right it's going to create these challenging situations with currencies and 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 you know Digital currency is is definitely um, uh, a little bit of an escape valve, and, and it's a way for people to 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 kind of leapfrog into this this new uh, internet-based digital economy. So maybe um, if you want to uh, bring up uh, bring up Ripio and and show the wallet experience, and uh, we had some USDC uh, sent your way. Okay, so this is my my account. Um, cool. I have a few pesos here, um, and then basically. Um, Sadly, this is my personal testing account and I, I have 141 uh, pesos, but I keep switching between pesos and reals, like if okay, I become a Brazilian. Yeah. So I have real, this, this symbol is reals, but, but I'm actually having the, the account in, in pesos right now. Okay, cool. um, I have a few pesos. Um, and if you go, in, if I go into the wallet, then, uh, for some reason, I haven't yet received the, the transaction, but basically, I have some Bitcoin, some um, USDC. Yeah. And then um, here I can buy or sell uh, USDC. Let's say, like, I'm, I want to sell uh, $50, $50 of, of USDC. I just can go here and let's you say, can sell like uh, 30. Yeah, like, I can just. Um, yeah, convert very easily. Um, it's just sim say, like, similar yeah. to what we saw with with with, uh, with yeah. Probit. You you've got a really simple interface where you receive this USDC yes. and you can just instantly convert yeah. it into uh, totally. Into, yeah, 
Uh, and an idea here is like, we, we have a much simpler wallet, uh, as you see compared co with Provid, uh, yeah. because we are trying to aim into like larger audiences and we wanna be a very simple wallet that anybody can use uh, because we are aiming into mainstream and there is no, um, the, this is interface has much less tools and buttons to press and get, right. get things wrong. But for example, if I was changing, like if I was getting $10 uh, and selling it um, through the traditional system, I, if I was being paid as a freelancer across the world uh, and I was using like banks, rather than having like almost uh, 1200 pesos, I would be getting uh, 700. That's wow. how much difference there is wow. between using stable coins and, and, and uh, and and the traditional so banking system. That's, that's that's incredible. So so mm -hmm. obviously for the person receiving that, that's like radically better. Like change your life better. And yeah. obviously for a, for a, for a business that's paying someone remotely, right? They want them to get as much as possible. And obviously in the banking system, it doesn't happen at the speed of the internet. It happens just no. incredibly painfully and slowly. Okay, so you just, yeah. you just so I just sell some uh, some yeah, USDC into pesos, okay. and so now I have more pesos in uh, in in my account. Yeah. And if I want to withdraw, I, we have two op options to, to withdraw. I could transfer, uh, do a withdraw to a to a bank account, like a, a very uh, traditional thing to do. How, hopefully, we we are in the morning in in South America, so. <laughs> This will get processed uh, and it will be in the same day uh, and with no, with no fees, uh -huh. but we also- That's um, great, so, do, so yeah. local banking, same day, no fees. Okay, we get that. Yes. Um, but tell us about Mercado Pago. So uh, Mercado Pago is, uh, we have an integration with, with Mercado Pago, which is basically the wallet of Mercado Libre, which is kind of like the Amazon of South America. You can buy literally anything online and we have a direct integration with them uh, across Excellent. the region. So I could buy anything. Like I say, I need a new bicycle. I, I will be uh, being able to buy it. This, this will go instantly 24 uh, seven. Instant 24, uh, okay, we like that. And, and with, <laughs> it's an and internet with no company. fees, yeah. Uh, but but I basically it could be like freelancing, uh, getting paid in stable coins and then being able to literally buy anything online uh, with, with this money and, and become kind of like a digital um, uh, citizen that, that right. is, is joins a, an economy that is global. So what's, it, what's incredible with that is like people can, they can store value in dollars. So they're, they're, they're hedging on that inflation, right? They, they can show that. And then when they need to buy something on Mercado Libre or they need to pay their utility bill in the local currency, like you can just, you can convert and transfer out and take care of that. Um, and, uh, and obviously Mercado Libre has, it's sort of almost all the things that you might need locally, uh, yeah. well, um, so very cool. So, um, yeah, let me check one thing up oh, there. You got the USDC. So well, just for the USDC from, uh, from Ronald. Uh, so yeah, so basically this is like, we are doing this in just, um, minutes and and it's going across the world and and it's extremely powerful and it's gonna change the world incredible so we we've gone from a business in boston to a contractor in london who could have been anywhere in the world with his wallet to a friend in korea into the bank korean yuan and banking system and then over to latin america you've got funds you can store those securely you're able to instantly get them into your marketplace to buy goods and services that you need but you can protect your value with, with dollar value as well. Uh, and this is all in, I think, uh, less than 30 minutes so far. So that's pretty <laughs> good. Um, very cool. So, you know, you know, I, I, I think, of course, like as, as someone who's, uh, you know, you're working from home, we're all working from home, I, I, or, or many of us are working from home. Um, you know, you, you also need to be able to participate in, in the broader uh, digital economy outside of your regional marketplace, like Mercado Libre. And, um, and so, I think one, one of the things that we wanted to highlight is how things like USDC and, and, and Circle APIs and what we're doing can empower, you know, commerce marketplaces and all kinds of marketplaces around the world 
to participate in the benefits of this. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'd like to actually um, uh, invite uh, Joao from Circle, who's head of product at Circle, to, to join us here. And uh, we'll come back to your screen in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, but you, you can stay on if you want. Um, uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll have uh, Dwell come over and then we'll, we'll have you come back in a few minutes, Sebastian. Let's do it. Cool. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, man. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, cool. So, um, uh, yeah, Dwell uh, is, is head of product here at Circle. And um, before we maybe dive into the ne next piece of this demo, I, I think one of the things that I want to emphasize, and it really connects very much to what we were just talking about with Sebastian is, you know, we have this vision of, uh, of a, a new way that internet commerce can take place, uh, a, a way that is built on, on digital currency, built on stable coins, things like USDC. And we believe that internet businesses everywhere are going to want to plug into this because of the benefits, the efficiency, the speed. Uh, and in particular, we think like commerce marketplaces are, are going to be a really interesting uh, kind of business. And so um, we actually just in the past quarter launched a whole set of uh, APIs. These APIs are for developers, but it's for businesses that want to connect the power of uh, these open networks and connect the power of things like USDC into how they uh, settle payments, not just from people who are paying them, but also increasingly these marketplaces have suppliers and sellers and creators from all around the world and creating a really seamless way to pay out on a mass basis to all these uh, different types of businesses. So um, maybe uh, Joao, you can bring us into, uh, into an actual marketplace example uh, that, that we're using here in this demo. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about that. We were talking about working from home. So um, why don't we give Sebastian some better um, gear for working from home, right? Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Um, so this is a marketplace that we have uh, built, you know, just to explain a, a, a sample situation around how a marketplace operator, as Jeremy said, can leverage Circle APIs and USCC to, to effectively, you know, cover a much broader uh, part of the world in a much easier and faster way. So, uh, Sebastian, I'm going to go ahead and... So this is, and, as if I'm noticing this correctly, this is like a, a, a furniture marketplace out of right. Indonesia? It's out of Indonesia. Yeah, exactly. So you see some prices in Indonesian rupees. Yeah. Um, so I'll select this chair for you, Sebastian. I hope you like it. <laughs> I'll add it to my cart. Um, I'll continue it to check good. out. So, <laughs> so this is just as any other marketplace people would be familiar with on the internet, right? So uh, let's, let's say at this point I have filled out my delivery information. So I'll continue to the payment method. And here I will choose to pay with USCC. All right, awesome. And um, and then I'll I'll maybe stop sharing. And, yeah. Uh, All right. And so let Sebastian stop sharing. Thing. So basically, in this case, this marketplace using Circle Wallet APIs is like gener easy, like generating one-time payment addresses in U for USDC payments that are that are coming into the marketplace. And now that this is here, uh, someone say in Argentina or Brazil or wherever who has USDC can now make that payment. So maybe if you stop sharing, we can. We can go back over to Sebastian, who can who can pay you that fifty nine uh, USDC. All right. All right. Let's do it. So I'm gonna share back my screen. So basically, and I, I, I'm gonna do it before we we're gonna say fifty nine. We say uh, USDC. I'm gonna put high commission, and then that was the address that was on the QR cool. code that I, I copy, and then. When you send, uh, awesome, and that's it. Uh, something awesome. I could show uh, that that you were like we, we've all have, we have been mentioned is that this is an open network, and there is uh, these transactions are going across across the world, but there is like we can all see the transaction going. Right. Yes, that was the hash, and that is the, trans the transaction going into this network of computers. This is an explorer of the blockchain, and this right. is like something that everybody, all of us, we can. This is, we can the whole check. world can see every yeah. transaction that's happened. They don't know who's sending it or what or where it's from. They just you can see these transactions. There's a record of of the transactions that are you know out uh, you know out on uh, out on the internet um, yeah. that are that are happening so, in real time. Cool. 
Um, that's mm -hmm. that's super cool. Um, we're gonna stop sharing. So yeah, we can that's go cool. Into... Yeah, we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to uh, Joao. So Joao, just maybe maybe you could just talk for a, a moment about um, you know what it is that this marketplace um, is, is actually what what they're using, how they're building that, um, and and how it integrate in. Yeah, absolutely. And then I'll reshare my screen in a second just to to um, to show that last um, payment screen uh, to illustrate what we are talking about. But basically, what we are facilitating for these businesses and and commerce businesses and marketplace businesses around the world is the ability to now. Um, you know, move into into this this tech stack that involves stablecoin and, and public blockchains in a much easier way that I think was not you know quite possible up until now. So we have two main APIs that we offer for businesses. One is called a payments API, another one is called a wallets API, and you can sort of use the two. Uh, to really provide your end users with, um, you know, the ability to collect payments in, in, in multiple ways. So I don't know if you guys remember, but on the payment screen, there was there were two payment options, one to pay with credit cards and one to pay with USCC. Um, those two payment options are basically leveraging either the payments API, where we collect payments from traditional methods and settle in USCC with a merchant, or the wallets API, in which you can collect payments, you know, in, in actual USCC you know, such as providing an address as we did with uh, with Sebastian, and uh, and then and then have the, the beauty of those two APIs is that they can have common settlement in USCC for the merchant. So the merchant really now with our APIs, they are able to only look at USCC coming from from all of these different payment channels, whether they are more traditional or raw USCC. And then since they have USCC, obviously settlement is much faster and they can do, as Jeremy said, they can do mass payouts to the other side of these marketplaces, right? The supplier, the manufacturer of that chair, they can do these mass payouts in a much, much easier uh, way. And we can, we can have a look at that as well. So you, we also like in there, there's with the payments API, right? You can also take traditional credit card payments. Like if you're a marketplace and people want to pay you with a visa or a MasterCard from hundreds of countries as well, you can get those card payments but also uh, get that in USDC and receive that in USDC. So you're, you, people are paying you with cards, but you as the, as the marketplace uh, are, are actually getting it in a stable coin, which has that, that the incredible power and reach of the internet. That's right. So I'm sharing my screen here. You guys didn't see, but um, basically, you know, uh, at some point, um, the, the marketplace was checking for that address and saw obviously a few confirmations. Uh, and it turned into this this page here. So you know, it's basically thanking me for the order because it has it has observed the the initial payment of those uh, 59 USCC. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick to another perspective, which would be so a here, perspective. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say here, you're you're um, we, we've got a a supplier or or a seller, and and I want to invite Sumit on uh, to join us for for this part of uh, part of the demo. Um, go ahead, Joao. You can start talking about what's going on. Yeah. So, so imagine, imagine as as with other as as with every marketplace, you need a you need some sort of capability for the suppliers on the marketplace to get paid, right? So this is a this is a sample screen where the manufacturer of that chair, uh, you know, they would have logged in on their account and they would see, oh, great, I I, I got paid for something that I for some of my products or, or goods that I sold on the marketplace. In this case, they got paid 5750 because obviously the marketplace has to has to make a living. So there was a fee taken here. Um, and let's say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, submit is going to is going to be the, the supplier in this case. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to withdraw this balance of USCC that, uh, that the supplier got on the marketplace. And I'm going to be sending this to uh, to submit uh, submits wallet. And uh, and hopefully we'll see that there in a few minutes. Okay, so in, in this case, um, the 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 payment method of the supplier is like they can they can receive payment from the marketplace in uh, in a stablecoin. Exactly. Exactly. And so they just have like a, essentially like uh, an address uh, on file uh, where they're where they're receiving those funds. Right, right. And there's a there's a lot of possibilities that we can imagine for that last mile, right? That's typically a, a huge pain point for marketplaces is how do you actually pay individuals and companies in all of these places around the world? Obviously, USCC can reach anywhere where the internet is. Um, but we also, we Circle also has APIs to facilitate payouts in, in, in bank accounts. 
And uh, but I think there's a lot of innovation that can be thought about how you can how you can have these USCC wallets, you know, for anyone around the world, and how you can associate, you know, traditional payment instruments that can be backed by those wallets. So those would be ways that that people can actually participate in the economy in in uh, in, in ways that they can't really today. Very very cool, um, Sumit. Are um, are you with us? All right, awesome. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy, for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and wow, thank you so much for uh, for pulling together the marketplace in Indonesia and having those funds flow through. And I guess they're on their way to India now. Thanks, Joao. No problem. Cool, Sumit. Uh, great to see you again. Um, and uh, and welcome. So uh, you're in India, and Coin DCX is a company you helped found and and our CEO and you're kind of connecting India to this greater world of, of global digital currency. Um, maybe just, just talk to us for a minute about uh, what you're up to and the, and the mission you have and, and, uh, and sort of how it, how it connects here. Sure, sure, Jeremy. Uh, so we have been running uh, CoinD6 for more than uh, two years now. Uh, we are currently the India's largest exchange. And at CoinD6, uh, Indians can buy or sell 300 plus uh, uh, crypto assets with Indian rupees. They can uh, do margin trading, they can do spot trading, uh, futures, lending. So we have built this suite of products that Indian people can, uh, uh, you know, get access to via Coin DCX. Uh, so yeah, I mean, and in terms of what we are doing is, uh, you know, uh, 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 we are also planning to build, uh, bring 50 million Indians into crypto. So we have. All right, we lost you. You're back. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 50 million people. Yes. 50 million people into crypto. And uh, the whole platform was designed in a very simple way uh, where any, uh, any individual can very seamlessly buy or sell any cryptocurrency with Indian rupees. Right. And so you're now, you're also connected to USDC. And so these, yes. these, these sort of, this, this sort of protocol for moving digital dollars around, it connects into India. And so if I'm, if I'm a business that is a supplier in India, I could, get, uh, I could get these digital dollars and then get them into rupee. Or if I'm a, a freelancer or a contractor or, or some other uh, individual in India, I can also receive funds instantly, cheaply as well. Um, maybe, maybe you can take us through and, and kind of give us a view of, of actually how that works for folks. Sure, sure. Let me just share my screen with you, uh, Jeremy. Uh, so can you see my screen now? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So this is how the platform looks like. And uh, here on the platform, people can, uh, uh, you know, buy USDC uh, with Indian rupees. So I'll just, uh, for everyone's reference, I'll just try buying USDC worth 100 rupees. Uh, so I'll, I'll click on this uh, buy order uh, and then confirm and then uh, done. So I got 1.28 USDC in my wallet. Uh, similarly, I, I just saw that, uh, I received around uh, 50 USDC on my wallet. So let me just see uh, whether I received it. So uh, yes, it I got 50, yeah. 7. So 5. it is currently, yeah, 57.5 uh, pending two confirmations. So I've got USDC in my uh, Coin D6 wallet. Uh, so while that is receiving- Similar to, to, to the others, like that, that transaction that came from that marketplace, you kind of, in, in, as a supplier, right? You cashed out. And now in, in Quinn DCX, you see it, it's incoming. And within minutes, it's going to be available uh, for, for trading into things uh, and, and actually, you know, tr even like converting into, into Indian rupee. Yes, correct. So while we are receiving that, I, I'll uh, also tell you what other uh, things the Indians can do on the platform. So they can do, uh, you know, spot trading with INR markets. They can do uh, margin trading futures. Uh, they can also, this is our flagship product. So people can convert their, uh, uh, you know, uh, crypto, liquidate their crypto to INR. So let me, uh, you know, so recent update in Indian market is banking ban just got lifted uh, three months ago. And we have already seen uh, demonstrable impact on individuals who are using crypto in new ways. Uh, one such example, you know, we can see is, is a Indian KYC verified CoinD6 user who also happens to be a freelancer right and ex expecting some payment in this case it's 57.5 dollars right uh, so rather than waiting for a bank to release this payment uh, which typically takes days 
uh, and and charges exorbitant right uh, in commissions he chooses to use coin bcx and uh, liquidates his crypto usdc uh, to inr so let me let me just uh, give you an example here so here uh, you know in the balance you can see uh, 240000 rupees i'll just sell 57.5 usdc uh, yeah. and convert that into inr so here you can see i will get the freelancer will get uh, 4422 rupees in his wallet right and so let me just that, try to how does that how does that compare to the 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 fees that like a a bank would charge for you know receiving and converting dollars and so on obviously this is happening at the speed of the internet in minutes uh and, yeah. and the movement of uh, of it over the internet's effectively close to free but wh how does that compare uh in, in terms of the 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 amount uh that a bank might charge yeah so bank charges quite a lot i mean it varies from three percent to uh, you know five percent or even higher uh, depending upon bank to bank and the forex rate that we get is also you know the freelancer lose out a lot so that's a approximately 5% difference that the people lose out on such transactions if they are using uh, a traditional uh, gateway but with with uh, coin dcx if you have uh, you know if you are registered on coin dcx you can immediately liquidate your crypto in this case uh, you know and it, it is completely free of cost so you will get at the Amazing. best price uh, you will get 4422 rupees in your wallet so let me just confirm the transaction and in a matter of seconds done so i got 4422 rupees in my uh, wallet so here you can see the wallet yeah. balance increased amazing right? yeah and now the freelancer now what the freelancer wants is he want this money in his bank account so what i'll do here is i will try place a withdrawal request of 4422 rupees yeah. uh, and and uh, it will come to the uh, verified bank account so let yeah. me just confirm the transaction yeah so while i'm doing that uh, typically it takes uh, you know it, it the transaction happens within seconds right so within a matter right. of a uh, uh, few seconds the uh, you know the person uh, gets money uh, in the bank account so here the request is completed now what happens next is is automatically the money gets credited to the uh, of uh, bank amazing. account of of the freelancer yeah amazing so from yeah, from Argentina to a market to a marketplace in the in, in Indonesia to your digital wallet into Rupee at a virtually zero cost and into a Indian uh, uh, bank account in in seconds, which is pretty freaking sweet. Um, that's so here, awesome. here, yeah, here you can see I just got four thousand four hundred twenty-two rupees exactly without any cost, right? Mm -hmm. So it is credited already to my bank account. That is super cool. Um, cool. I want to. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have us wrap up. If you can stop sharing your screen, and then everyone else, all the guests, if you guys can all just pop back on here for a minute, uh, that would be uh, that'd be awesome. Excellent, Ronald. Yeah. Sebastian. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, that Everyone's worked. Left. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, I just I think it's so cool and um, and it's so cool to have obviously like entrepreneurs from all around the world innovating in in regional markets in 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 global markets creating these you know tools that every person with a mobile phone can use that you know eventually I think really in the next you know I think very certainly in the next couple of years hundreds of millions of people can start to use and. The benefits, I think, hopefully from this are going to be really clear to folks. But any, uh, any, any, any final thoughts from any of you guys on, on what we just did today? Yeah, we're way ahead of schedule. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it uh, looks so fast. It's really cool. Yeah, it also shows how how easy it will be to integrate the, the economy globally. Uh, com compare this to doing it with SWIFT through banks. Uh, just not not only the front end, like what is happening to the user, which is like days of waiting on international wires, is also on the back end. There is so much trust and accounting for every transaction, so yeah. much waste into fraud prevention, uh, and this is this just works seamlessly. It's native to the internet, uh, and it has its all benefits. And we did it like in yeah. less than an hour. Um, like at yeah. least my transaction costs 50 cents yeah. and it could have been for millions of dollars uh, and it's, it's incredibly powerful.
And I think, Jeremy, your point, I mean, we're all from different companies. I, I, Arjun has never been in touch with any of these companies and our products are fully compatible and right. uh, can interpret. Uh, Open standards. That, that's amazing. Yeah. Like this is how the internet grew so big and this is how we're going to take over the global digital economy. Yeah, we never had to integrate anything, talk with each other. Like the assistant just worked because it's like sending email. Right. And, and it's yeah. ever proof secure and, 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 and cheap as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. Now I know like all of us, there's a lot of heavy lifting in what, in what we're creating to make this all possible on different parts. There's creating awesome consumer experiences. There's, you know, in, in each of those markets, whether it's Korea or Latin America or, or the U S or, or India, like making sure we're working with regulators, making sure we're, we're, you know, doing things compliantly, we're handling, knowing our customers, uh, and, and all these kinds of things. But, um, it's, uh, you know, every, everybody's making it possible. Yeah, it, it also, uh, being this open, it allows us to like be different people, like working on a common goal and focusing in like, we divided the problem. Like we, we don't have to care about yeah. how compliance works in India. Like we just yeah. work in Latin America, we look with our local regulators, we do all that needs to be done to make it possible here. And everybody's like working in this, like it's a, in, a, in a global scale. Yeah. with no coordination yeah yeah it's pretty awesome well um i, I want to thank everyone thank all you guys for helping make this happen I, we pulled this together pretty fast and um i hope my, my greatest hope is that people who um have heard about digital currency who've heard about things like stable coins who've heard about crypto but don't really get it like get the power of this and what it's going to do for the world economy and for people and, and their needs and how they're going to participate in the economic system. I, I hope this helps really shed some more light on that for, for everyone. So yeah, thank you all uh, for joining today and uh, we will see you online very soon. Bye everyone. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks everyone. Thanks you guys. Thank you, Jeremy. Absolutely. Enjoyed it. Yeah. You're welcome. So I am uh, really happy with how that all came together. Um, really incredible to see this global economic system developing in front of us tremendous work from amazing entrepreneurs, making things possible that have never been possible before. So uh, really, really grateful. Um, next week, uh, we have a very special guest uh, for an extended one-on-one -on -one fireside chat or conversation with Lawrence, Lawrence H. Summers, former US Secretary of Treasury, uh, a, a major player in the global economic system and, and world, a, a great thinker. Uh, and he's gonna be joining me to discuss global macroeconomic issues in the context of the global financial uh, crisis that is uh, continuing to unfold and really exploring the role of digital currency in the future of the international monetary system, taking things like we saw happening today, how do we actually take that to the next level and really make that more core to the international monetary system? It'll be a, a really excellent discussion, I'm sure. So until next week, stay well, stay safe and stay informed. Thank you.